On April 9, 1865, Confederate General Robert E. Lee surrendered to Union General Ulysses S. Grant, ending the American Civil War. That morning, Lee sent a message of surrender to Grant, and they met at one o'clock in the parlor of Wilmer McLean to discuss the terms. The Union capture of the Confederate capital, Richmond, Virginia, on April 3, 1865, was the final push to Confederate surrender and the end of the four-year-long battle. Lee found his army surrounded by Union forces in the Virginia countryside, with few remaining supplies and no other military strategy available. The 25th Army Corps, commanded by General Godfrey Weitzel, were the first African-American troops to enter the newly liberated Richmond, Virginia. African-American correspondent Thomas Morris Fletcher was there to capture the reactions of those still imprisoned in the infamous Richmond slave pens. He states, The jailers were in all cases slaves and had been left in undisputed possession of the buildings. The owners, as soon as they were aware that we were coming, opened wide the doors and told the confined inmates they were free. But they could not realize it until they saw the Union Army, and even then they thought it must be a pleasant dream. The following day, President Abraham Lincoln visited Richmond and addressed the citizens. According to the account of war correspondent Charles Carton Coffin, quote, an old woman declared, I know that I am free, for I have seen Father Abraham and felt him. Only 11 days later, at the Forge Theater in Washington, D.C., John Wilkes Booth assassinated President Abraham Lincoln through a fatal gunshot to the head. By murdering the President, Ulysses S. Grant, Vice President Johnson, and Secretary of State Seward, Booth hoped to end the war and force the North to finally recognize the Confederate government. At 7.22 a.m. on April 15th, President Abraham Lincoln died. News traveled of the president's death, and celebrators quickly turned into mourners. Flags flew at half-mast. On learning of the president's assassination, Edgar Dinsmore, an African-American soldier from New York, stated, We mourn for the loss of our great and good president as a loss irreparable. Humanity has lost a firm advocate, our race its patron saint, and the good of all the world a fitting object to emulate. The name Abraham Lincoln will ever be cherished in our hearts, and none will more delight to lisp his name in reverence than the future generations of our people. As we grieve the end of the Civil War and the loss of so many Americans, we should also be constantly looking toward the future. As President Lincoln once said, I am a slow walker, but I never walk back. We must reflect on the pains of the past, but mindful not to repeat them. In her book, Reminiscence of My Life in Camp, Susie King Taylor analyzes the state of African Americans in 1902. She eloquently addresses an irrefutable truth that every generation of people should remember, writing. I look around now and see the comforts that our younger generation enjoy and think of the blood that was shed to make these comforts possible for them, and see how little some of them appreciate the old soldiers. There are only a few of them left now, so let us all, as the ranks close, take a deeper interest in them. Let the younger generation take an interest also, and remember that it was through the efforts of these veterans that they, and we older ones, enjoy our liberty today.